One of the undoubted highlights among the pavilions here in the Giardini is what used to be called the Italian Pavilion, which invariably was a dog's dinner with some interesting things in it, which is now, though, being co-opted for the title of General Pavilion, and Massimiliano Gioni has curated it, and it's really good. The touchstone of the exhibition is psychoanalysis, but not Freud, but Jung, whose red book he began in 1914, and which is illustrated all the way around the opening room. These are hallucinations, totems, fantasies, archetypes, with an emphasis on the human imagination and internal landscape. And if all that sounds a little bit surreal, well, it's supposed to, because the other presiding force is the self-confessed Pope of Surrealism, Andre Breton, whose life mask clearly evokes the idea of a death mask. Then there are the blackboard drawings from the mid-twenties by Rudolf Steiner, founder of Theosophy, who had a great influence on both Mondrian and Kandinsky, and therefore could be seen as one of the father figures in the development of abstract art. But here, in what were lecture notes, he presents himself as an artist in his own right. This is work by the young British artist Roger Hyams. You may think it was an evocation of the situationist dictum that underneath the street there lies the beach, or maybe even a reminder that Venice is built on the sea. But in fact, this is an atomised altar, which of course gives the work a completely new meaning. Two great women painters have been honoured by this year's Biennale, sharing the Leon d'Or. The 81-year-old Marissa Mertz from Italy, who once said that with the eyes closed, the eyes are actually open, and these wonderful internalised visions with a kind of delicate, almost relic-like feel to them, really stun. But in some ways, the show stealer is the work of the 90-something Austrian, Maria Lasnig, who shows herself here in a naked self-portrait, gun to her head, gun pointed out at us in a picture called It's Me or You, and then in another picture, she shows the more nurturing side of stereotypical femininity, holding this little creature in one hand, but with a wonderful twinkle in her eye. And to cap it all off, something that should be totally crazy, and indeed is, but in quite an interesting and revealing way, a juxtaposition of two artists. One, the mystic American Zen Buddhist artist, James Lee Byers, who has these two gilded marble columns, that he says are both figures, one re representing the question of death, the other the question of interrogative philosophy, make of those what you will, they're the big questions I suppose. And in the same room, juxtaposed next to James Lee Byers, the mystic and Satanist Alistair Crowley, who together with the artist Frida Harris, reworked the tarot cards in his own fantastical, sexualized way, which in a funny kind of way, aside from referencing or evoking 70s album covers, brings us full circle back to Jung.